I have a great love of photography, and uh, the first picture you're going to see here is a picture of me with my mother when I was two years of age, in, up in Toronto, Canada, where I was born. And uh, the point of the picture is, frankly, just to give you an idea of what... Uh, well, this, this picture is in an album at, at our home, it's, so it's, it's, you know, it's more than 50 years of age. It's uh, how many years? I think 36. 30, so it's uh, 70. 70 years of age. And you see, it, it may be slightly yellow, but it really hasn't deteriorated that much. And that's what we expected our photographs to do. But boy, did a lot of her happened in the last uh, 40 or 50 years. David and, and uh, Henry were both recounting it. And I'm going to show you my versions of some of the same things. There I am. 12 years after you saw the first picture, 12 years later, I'm 14, I'm starting to be a photographer. And uh, you know, this is, whoops, whoops, sorry. Got the wrong buttons here. Bottom, bottom. Bottom and the back top, okay. Okay, so there I am with the camera, and these are some of my early pictures done with flash bulbs. Four by five speed graphic, that was the professional camera. I really felt like a big guy when I had that in my hand. And so these are some of the pictures I took in the very early years on, uh, on film, of course. And uh, black and white prints, they're still good today, and you're seeing what I did. This is a wedding photograph that I did one, uh, with that same camera. As a kid, I was like 15 by now. And the funny thing was, I was in an, at an event uh, a couple of years ago, and somebody brought this picture to me, and they said, you took our wedding pictures when you were 15 years of age, and now you're a very uh, a big photographer. Would you please sign it for us? <laughs> so I said, please send me a copy of it, because I'd like to put it in the show here. So that's why it's here. So anyway, there's my brother, Kent, who's now a retired judge up in Canada. Anyway, I took this picture of him with a film called Ansco Chrome, and I processed it in the dark room myself, and I remember all the trauma I went through worrying about whether I'd be able to keep the ten temperatures exact. And of course, I did it so economically. I had a roller cord camera. I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, I shot these pictures on one roll of film, 12 frames in my roller cord. And I managed to sell it to a magazine for a cover. It's my first color picture ever published. I was so excited, and I'm still just as excited about this business, this world today. We are living, as Henry says, in very exciting times. We all know that. Here's a picture of me in Florida, uh, in, as, in early in my career, and oops, sorry, sorry, got to get these buttons right. And here's a, a huge old graphics camera to four by five pictures. And now the difference between taking the pictures, what? Did somebody ask a question? No, no. Okay. One of the differences between this period uh, of all these pictures I've just shown you and today is that you, you didn't just push the button and go zip, zip, zip. You had to determine exactly when you were going to take this picture. Now, the idea of making my own, I made my, all my own black point pens that you saw there in the dark room, bring, watching them come up in the developer. You know, no mechanical devices to develop them. Uh, and then I got involved in early type C, or ectocolor technology, and it was very exciting to think that we could make color prints for the first time. So I was one of the first guys to jump in into the chemistry of making color prints. Uh, and I lived at that time uh, just a short distance from Rochester, and, and I worked at a studio. And this is a picture of the guy I worked for photographing a 1957 Cadillac a long time ago. 50 years ago, that's where we get our 50 year circle. So here I am, and I made type C prints in the dark for myself. By the way, each print took an hour and a half to make. Each print. And then you might find the color is off, and so you'd have to make another one. Photography was so vastly different at that time. So these are some of the pictures I took to New York when my career began, and I showed them. And I got these out recently, and look at the fading. Just exactly what Henry was talking about, we all know about. That's what we have left behind, everybody. Aren't we lucky? And that's in the dark, too. And that's a dark story. Now, here, Henry, this is interesting. I found this, my first cover ever published on a photographing magazine with a new agricolor 
uh, print material, Henry has written about how un incredibly unstable egg foot color was. And uh, do you want to comment on that at all directly? This well, is not the version four, but it's an earlier version. Yeah, that's I think 1959. Yes, sir. The, the, the Agfa in around 1970, uh, 75, introduced the first RC coded uh, color print material, which we think of as the most unstable material ever made in modern times. And even in the dark, generally total loss of cyan in four or five years. And I have many examples of that, including the school picture of my daughter, totally wiped like, out, uh, never displayed. So that's what we've left behind. And, but it was all part of getting into color photography and photography. These are some of the early pictures. I'm just going to go through with photographs, not necessarily talking about printing, but uh, that my career started with. This is my first trip to, to Europe uh, with working with Look Magazine. I was a young photographer. I got very lucky because when I was in my early 20s, I was hired by this huge... Uh,